having a crisis. Last time I had a crisis like this, I experienced a life-changing Google moment. This Google moment resulted in the realisation that I am asexual and it was the birth of the Ace episodes. But now, two years later, I just don't feel that sure about anything anymore. I was editing a Q&A recently in which I said that a relationship was not an experience I ever intended to repeat. And not too long before that I made a video in which I said that I was happy that I was going to be alone forever. Of course those things were true at the time and maybe they are still true but the thing is I just feel less sure. I feel like I don't know anything anymore. What I do know is this. I can look at this one particular customer in work and I don't want to stop looking at him. I think he's absolutely gorgeous. He is a specimen of a man. But that's where it stops. Nothing, no thoughts come after that. I just like looking at him and I appreciate how he looks. But then again, someone else could give me the time of day, get to know me and enjoy talking to me and in my head I'll be wondering what we're gonna name our various pets when we're married and living together. And then I have to check myself and be like, mm, alternate universe Sam, you're arrow ace, you're not gonna marry anyone or have pets with anyone. At the very least, I may have wondered if you and I would make a good couple if things were different with me. But if I'm having these thoughts, does that erase my aromanticism? Does that mean that maybe I'm not as arrow as I thought? I mean, I've said numerous times that aromanticism is a spectrum. Aromantics can be in relationships. Asexuals can have sex. So maybe this doesn't necessarily mean I'm not asexual. I think I'll be asexual forever. But maybe I fluctuate. This is the thing about the internet. If you post something publicly, there are no backseas. You can't take it back, it's out there forever. I've posted 32 Ace episodes in which I tell the world that I'm Arrow Ace completely and I never want to be in a relationship again and I never will be in a relationship again. And like I said, those things were true. But what if they're not true anymore? You put something out there and you better mean it because that shit sticks. So you better believe that I've put so much thought into this. I've been feeling this for quite some time. Every time I edit a video in which I'm like, ugh, relationships, I kind of cringe a bit. And that didn't used to happen. Like I said though, I've always made clear that sexuality and romantic orientation are fluid. Things can change, feelings can change, and people can change at any given moment. It could take any amount of time. Tomorrow, I could feel like I am complete homo allosexual and want to go around banging women and that would be valid. I would still have been asexual on this very day if that's how I identified. And I don't think people should be getting stick for that. You can fall in love with someone and fall out of love with someone and that is completely normal. But apparently you're not allowed to change how you identify. I don't believe that. One thing that's always stuck with me is when I collaborated with someone in the ace community. I'm not going to say who it is, but at one point they said to me, are you sure you're not Demi? And at first I felt highly offended. I was like, you're a person 
in the ace community questioning my asexuality. Like, that's not okay. For someone outside the ace community who doesn't particularly understand asexuality and what it is, okay, they can question me all they want, but a fellow asexual? I was offended, but now? I don't know, why has it stuck with me for so long? If it didn't hold any ground, if it didn't mean anything. So in this time of crisis, I thought that I would do the thing that helped me last time, Google. So demisexuality, demiromanticism, what are they? I've written a buttload of colourful rainbow notes in my colourful rainbow unicorn notebook that I thought would help me sift through my feelings because my brain has been such a mad tangle for a long time. I can't put my finger on when, but I've needed to sort through these thoughts for a long time. I shrugged them off for a long time and I don't want to anymore just because I don't want people making fun of me or saying they told me so or laughing at me if eventually I develop a crush or romantic or sexual feelings. I need to be honest. If I'm not honest and eventually I did want to be in a relationship, then a relationship wouldn't happen because my pride would get in the way. I need to shut my window right now. <laughs> so if I'm... Focus on my camera, please, thank you. So if I'm looking down right now, it's because I'm reading my notes. Basically, the things I wrote down were as follows. The broad definition of demisexual is that you only experience attraction in the context of a close emotional bond. In other words, a demisexual is a person who experiences attraction but needs to form an emotional relationship first. In layman's terms, it's the difficulty in feeling attraction to someone you're not friends with first. The primary way to meet people is through apps, followed by meeting up in person. And while you can generally tell on a first date whether or not you want to be friends with someone, it's near impossible for a demi to decide whether or not you'd be attracted to them, without the element of trust and friendship already in place. This sentence is one I found quite relevant. Demisexuality is actually quite subtle if you're not aware of it. I feel like if you're not ready to date or open to date, then you'll never know that you could be attracted to people if a bond is formed first. Bustle's article also included signs that you could be demi if you're still unsure. And one I wrote down is, while the rest of the world seems to be moaning about how commitment phobic our generation is, you feel an entirely different kind of pressure because you know that when it comes down to it, people expect you to have a genuine gauge for how you will proceed with them after a first date. So you focus too much on everything. Now, I've been on numerous dates and never after the first date have I felt attracted to the person. I found them aesthetically attractive, which I guess you kind of need, but it didn't go on from there. And when I discovered asexuality and I wasn't ready to jump in the dating pool, I just thought, yep, that was me because I'm asexual, because I'm aromatic, and I will never feel attraction for these people. So it didn't occur to me that I could be Demi because I just never gave romantic attraction enough time to develop. Another Demi sign I wrote down is, you have found yourself very confused in friendships. And that has definitely been a constant in my life. Like I've said before, I was very close friends with my girlfriend when I was a teenager before we got together. When I started developing friendships with boys in school, I often found myself confused about our friendship and how it was supposed to work. 
because I identified as Arawais, I found it way easier to talk to boys in particular because if they knew I was ace and aromantic, they wouldn't pursue me because they'd know what was up, you know? You know? And then the friendship confusion came and it's like, they knew where I stand. Do I know where I stand? So that begs the question, am I still Arrowies? Aromanticism and asexuality are both spectrums. You can be in a romantic, sexual relationship if you are Arrowies. Demisexuality and demiromanticism are on those spectrums. It's just a case of how close I feel to each label. Would I date again? Maybe, but I'd have to have the bond first. Does that seem likely? Maybe not, but if it comes along, maybe I would give it a shot. And what does that mean in terms of attraction? Since becoming comfortable with the Arrowways label, I have often had thoughts like, if I wasn't ace, I would be blah blah blah. My train of thought when it comes to romantic orientation is, if I wasn't aromantic, I would probably be bi or pan romantic. Sexually, if hypothetically I wasn't asexual, I would say I'd be hetero. But for any of those things to happen, we would have to be friends first, whether it was just a romantic relationship or a romantic and sexual relationship. There would have to be massive, massive trust. I haven't spoken to anyone about this. It's been on my mind for months and I've kept it all inside because it's taken so long to untangle these thoughts in my brain. And Arroway Sam has just been pushing them away because she's found her place in a community. And my god, she doesn't want to jeopardise that. The ace community has done so much for me. But what it comes down to is that I will always have a place in the ace community. I will always be a resource for any aces. And I feel like this video could be so important for aces who are scared of rejection from the community because they want to tweet their label a little bit. Sexuality is a lifetime experiment. Until you find the person for you or people for you or decide that there's no person for you and you just need friends and family, you may never know. You may always change your label. You may identify with every label under the rainbow until you find that you're just cishet after all. I am okay with my label changing but what I'm not okay with is other people's reactions. I don't want people making fun of me if I develop a crush because I have stood by the Arrow East label for two years. Also, I am in recovery from an eating disorder. One of the symptoms of eating disorders is losing your libido. I discovered I was asexual while I was going through an eating disorder and I don't want people thinking that I am changing my label because I am getting better. Recovered or not, changing my label or not, I am still part of the ace community. I still identify as asexual. I just don't know where I sit on the spectrum anymore. And also, it's just too complicated. Arrow ace can narrow down to the word no. Demi-romantic, bi-romantic, demisexual, heterosexual is a fucking mouthful and God, it will take some explaining. But do I really need to explain it to anyone other than a prospective partner? When I posted this video about me enjoying sex dreams, it really brought these thoughts to the surface even more. And I have started to miss 
cuddles. I remember loving the moments with my boyfriend when we just hold each other and watch TV or fall asleep in each other's arms and like <laughs> totally like relationship niche but I really liked stroking his beard. <laughs> so what am I? Demisexual, demiromantic, aromantic, asexual, all of them, none of them. I don't know. I'm on the spectrum. I'm on the arrow spectrum. I'm on the ace spectrum. I just don't know where and that's okay. My battery's running out. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it at that. I will elaborate on this in future race episodes. I do want to talk more about it because I feel like it's so important to tell people that it's okay to question yourself. It's okay to identify with different labels and it's okay to feel how you feel. I'll see you next time.